Let's take a little look at the physics behind the pendulum and a grandfather clock. Again, just a little bit as a preview of the problems we're going to be looking at. So let, let's just draw a little pendulum, Bob, that you might find in a clock. So here you go. So what do we do? The goal is you pull it to the side. And let's say, here it is right now. Here's the rest height. Let's say we pull it a height h above the rest height. So right now, what have we done? Assuming it has mass m, at position 1, what type of energy does it have? All gravitational potential. So we're not going to be using numbers, but we could say at 1, the gravitational potential, well, is m times g times h. That's how much energy it has. That is how much energy it has in the system. It can never gain any unless we add some stuff. But right now we know it has mgh potential. So it falls. And now it's at position 2. Since this is where we drew our reference, and we'll label it PE due to gravity 0, we know at 2 it has no potential. Well, what happened? You can't just lose energy. One of the things we'll look at is you can't lose it, you can't destroy it. There's got to be something there. Let's also assume, for now, this is a perfect pendulum system. When I mean perfect, we mean absolutely perfect. There can be no losses for anything. What that means is the potential energy has to go into something. Well, at the bottom of the swing, what is it doing? Right at the bottom, it's moving at some velocity this way, v, right at the bottom. Since it doesn't have potential energy, and it is moving, we know it has kinetic. And in fact, the kinetic energy at 2 is 1 half mv squared. And there must be a relationship between the energy at 1 and the energy at 2. Since you can't lose any energy, the relationship between 1 and 2 is the PE due to gravity at 1 must equal the kinetic energy at 2. So for every joule of potential lost, there's a joule of kinetic gained. This is in a system where there's no losses. So what happens now? It keeps swinging. The question is, how high will it swing on this side? It also has to be h, the same height we began with, if we call it 3. The reason why is, at 3, since it can't swing any higher, what's going to happen? Now we know at 3, the kinetic energy equals 0. But since all the kinetic energy now goes into potential, you have to have the same amount, so the potential energy due to gravity will be mgh again. No loss of energy at all. So what does this mean? In a perfect world, which we obviously don't have, this would swing forever. It would be perpetual motion. Uh, sorry, there is no such thing as perpetual motion. Don't let psycho-crazy people on the Internet tell you you can have free energy. It doesn't exist. Well, why doesn't this permanently happen? Because it would be nice if you had a clock. You would do this, and it would run forever, and it would always tell time properly. In real life, there are losses. In fact, there are frictional losses. There's no way around it. And the main friction isn't air friction, even though there's a little. It would probably be friction up in a bearing right here. So how does that affect the system? So if you add friction, what it means is, as you go from 1 to 2, some... PE due to gravity goes into heat. Thermal energy is what friction, or heat is caused by thermal, or by friction, excuse me. So some PE goes to heat, so there is less to go to KE. So what that means is this appears as a loss of mechanical energy. A loss of mechanical. And what that means then is if you go from 2 to 3, 
it does not swing as high. And eventually what's going to happen is it's going to stop because all the initial potential energy will go into heat. Well, it doesn't take too long to stop if we don't continually add energy to the system. It will stop relatively quickly, meaning within a day or so, possibly less. So how do we add energy to the system? If we want to fight the frictional force or fright, fight the frictional heat, we'll pump energy into the system. This is why we have the weights in a clock. The weights are huge. Attached with a chain, let's call the weights big mass M. Let's make them another height above the ground. Who knows? We can make this any H we want. Let's call it big H. What happens? As the pendulum swings, M falls very slowly. Well, as it falls, what happens? We use the gravitational work to fight the frictional forces or to fight the frictional heat. So as the weight falls, we use it to add energy to the system. This is the idea of a grandfather clock pendulum. Just a very, very basic idea so we can see what we're going to be looking at. And these are the two types of systems we will have. A system where we have no losses at all, which is a model. And then a real system where there are losses, so we have to figure out how to combat those losses or to see what happens to our mechanical energy.